Hi, this is Matt with ApplianceFartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top six reasons why your freezer isn't defrosting. Stick around till the end of the video for an important tip that can help save you money. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the water supply underneath the sink. First thing we need to look at is the defrost timer. It controls the defrost cycle of the refrigerator. The defrost timer is made up of a motor, gears, and contacts. It switches the refrigerator between the cooling and defrost cycles and helps keep the evaporator free of ice buildup. They have a set number of hours for cooling and minutes of defrost. As an example, this one will run for 8 hours and defrost for 30 minutes. Defrost timers are usually mounted in the control section of the refrigerator, but on older models, they may be behind the kick panel. If your freezer isn't defrosting, it could be that the defrost timer has failed. In order to check and see if the timer motor is advancing, you can mark the shaft of the timer and then check later to see if it's moved. If it didn't, then the motor or gears have failed and the defrost timer will have to be replaced. You can also manually advance the timer with that center shaft. Use a flat blade screwdriver to advance the timer. It will click as you do. Then it will make a louder click as it goes into defrost. When you're in defrost mode, the compressor should stop running and the heater should come on. In order to find out, you'll have to temporarily turn the power back on. You must do this when the freezer compartment is cold. Do not try it on a fridge that's been unplugged to defrost, otherwise the defrost thermostat will not let the heater come on. In order to tell if the heater is working, you'll have to access it behind the back wall of the freezer. After about one to two minutes, you should be able to feel the heat from it. If the heater doesn't come on, then do the checks for the heater and the thermostat in the upcoming sections. If those parts check out okay, that usually means the contacts inside the timer are bad and won't send power to the heater. If the contacts are bad, then the defrost timer will have to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we need to check the defrost thermostat. It's a safety device that shuts off the defrost cycle if the freezer gets too warm. Defrost thermostats cut the power off to the heater if the temperature gets too hot. This is so it doesn't get too hot in the freezer section and starts melting the frozen food. They usually have a temperature rating stamped on them to tell you what temperature they turn the power off to the heater. Depending upon the manufacturer, it could be either in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Sometimes they're marked with a C or an F, and sometimes they're not. They vary in temperature, so check your thermostat to see what it's rated at. This one's rated at 6040 Celsius. That means it shuts the power off at 60 degrees Celsius and turns the power back on when it cools down 40 degrees Celsius below that at around 20 degrees. Once the temperature goes below that, the power to the heater is restored. The thermostats are usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section on the evaporator. If the unit isn't defrosting, it could be that the thermostat has failed and power isn't being sent to the heater. To test it, first make sure the thermostat is colder than the reset temperature. It's best to test it in the freezer so it's right around 0 degrees Fahrenheit to be sure it's under the reset temperature. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. Depending upon your design, you may just have to unplug the wiring harness and touch a probe to each terminal. If not, you would have to cut the wires to make sure the thermostat is removed from the system and then test each wire. Touch a probe to each terminal or wire. If the thermostat has continuity when it's cold, then it's fine and you can splice and seal it back in. If it doesn't, then it's failed and needs to be replaced. Next thing we need to look at is the defrost heater. It's what heats up to melt the ice buildup off the evaporator. There have been many different styles and shapes of defrost heaters, but they all do the same thing. They heat up during the defrost cycle to melt the ice off the evaporator so the refrigerator cools efficiently. They're usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section, along the sides and bottom of the evaporator. If your freezer isn't defrosting, the heater may have failed. Once you have access to the heater, you'll have to test it for continuity. Remove the wires and touch each end with a test probe. 
If it doesn't have continuity, then the heater is bad and needs to be replaced. Now we need to look at the defrost temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature by the evaporator. Defrost temperature sensors are white plastic sensor bulbs. They tell the control board the temperature during the defrost cycle and shut the power off to the heater if it gets too warm. Temperature sensors are often used in multiple places in the fridge, but here we're specifically referring to the one in the defrost system. These sensors are usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section on the evaporator. If the defrost temperature sensor is failing or is completely failed, it could prevent the refrigerator from defrosting. In order to test the sensor, we need to remove it from the system. Just like the defrost thermostat, you can follow the wires back to the nearest connection point to see if it unplugs, otherwise you may need to cut it out. Once you have access to either the wire harness or the individual wires, you'll need to check the ambient air temperature. In our case, it's 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The sensor will have a different ohms reading depending upon the temperature, so you'll have to look at your text sheet to see what it should read. Our sheet says about 5400 ohms at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Touch the probes to the wiring harness pins or bare wires, whichever you have, and check the ohms reading. It should be close to the one specified in your text sheet. If it is, you can reinstall it, but if the reading's way off or you're not getting a reading at all, you'll have to replace it. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next is the defrost thermal fuse. It's a safety device that shuts off the defrost cycle if it gets too warm in the freezer. The defrost thermal fuse is a non-resettable fuse. If the temperature gets too hot during the defrost cycle, the fuse will blow, shutting off the power to the defrost heater to protect the food from thawing. Some are sold by themselves and others come with the defrost temperature sensor. They're usually mounted behind the back wall of the freezer section on the evaporator. If the freezer is not defrosting, it could be that the fuse has failed. These usually have a wire harness that you can unplug to test them. Once you have access to it, you have to test it for continuity. So set your meter to continuity again. If you have the type that comes with the temperature sensor, make sure you follow the fuse wires back to the wiring harness connector to make sure you're testing the fuse. Touch a probe to each terminal. It should have continuity. If it doesn't, then it needs to be replaced. The last thing we need to look at is the defrost control board. It controls the defrost cycle of the refrigerator. The defrost control board controls the defrost cycle of the refrigerator to keep the evaporator free of ice. Some models have a separate defrost control board and others have it built into the main control board. Depending upon your fridge, the control board could be mounted behind the controls inside the fridge or on the back of the unit behind an access panel. If your refrigerator isn't defrosting, it could be the defrost control board. Unfortunately, there have been a lot of different boards over the years and we can't show you how to test them all. You'll have to find your tech sheet and run the diagnostics. Here's an example of a tech sheet that shows you how to put the unit into the defrost test mode. If the control board fails the test, you'll have to replace it. If you can't track down your tech sheet, but the other parts in your defrost system checked out okay, more than likely the board has failed. Now here's that money saving tip we mentioned earlier. If your freezer compartment isn't getting as cold as it used to and your ice creams are getting soft, it could be that your condenser coils are dirty. Dirty coils can cause the freezer to run warmer than normal if the condenser and other components are covered in dust and pet hair. Dust and pet hair can insulate the coils, preventing them from working efficiently. This can also make the refrigerator run more and cause wear and tear to those components. Keeping the coils clean can improve your refrigerator's efficiency by 30%. So doing this can save you money on your electric bill and future repair costs. In order to clean them, you'll have to pull the refrigerator out and remove the rear access panel. Then carefully clean the coils. Keep in mind that some may be accessed from the front. You may have to use a condenser cleaning brush to reach in there. Also while you're back there, clean the compressor condenser motor and fan blade and wipe down everything else. Be sure you're careful not to damage anything and make sure you do this at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.